Hello again, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani here. We are getting very close to UFC 249. It's just days away now. And one of the featured fights on the ESPN prelims pits former UFC strawweight champion Carlos Sparza going up against the former Invicta FC atomweight champion, your friend and mine, the great karate hottie herself, Michelle Watterson, who is kind enough to be joining us today right before she makes the voyage to Jacksonville, which I really appreciate. I know how hectic it can be before you you leave your house and you go to the airport and all that stuff. So thank you so much for doing this, Michelle. I appreciate it. Thank you. I always make time for you because um, you always make time for me. So I appreciate you. Thank you. So uh, what has this been like? You know, you've been in this game for quite some time. Has this been the most unique training camp of your career? Yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty unique. Uh, I'd have to say we're, we're, we're kind of blessed in the sense that when we bought this new house, our first um, our first want was a home gym. And it was because, um, you know, our daughter is at home in the evenings and we have to take her to gymnastics and we want to spend dinner with her and do homework with her. So having a home gym was important for us because we wanted to be able to train at home in the evenings. And it's definitely come in handy um, um, with all the restrictions, we've been doing the majority of our of our training here at home and having the coaches come down individually and and work with us. But outside of that, I think it's you know uh, um, <laughs> I, I keep telling people all week is that it, it's the life of a fighter to have to deal with um, the unknown and, and and different circumstances and and things that happen outside of your control and and try and, you know if if it's not something like this then it's it's an injury or it's your opponent pulling out or it's or it's something happening to you um to you in your personal life or you know um you failing you getting sick there's always going to be something that you have to deal with as a fighter and, and overcome and so this is just another one of those things so has the entire quote unquote training camp been at your home gym or have you been able to go to the Jackson Wink gym or other gyms it's it's been the entire camp has been here at my at my home gym and then um, with my strength and conditioning I've just been going um, live on my Instagram with my strength and conditioning coaches and just basically working out with them and 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 all my fans and then we spent we we um you know we went over to Coach Jackson's gym or Coach Wink and Coach Jackson gym just to see the cage to feel out the cage and stuff like that just individually um, but no training. Wow. Um, just curious, what's more challenging, if you will, this circumstance where you can't necessarily go to the gym like you used to or homeschooling? <laughs> um, I think the learning curve for the homeschooling was was quite challenging. And it's just because it's me having to wear a different hat and my daughter also having to see me in a different light. You know, it's not mommy or um, it's it's teacher at that point. And, and I'm just kind of gaining a, a newfound respect for teachers, especially for, for younger children that have have small attention spans. <laughs> but it, it's really been such an amazing blessing in disguise because my we've been able to have, there's just been so many teaching points throughout all of this. You know, my daughter had to uh, postpone her, her birthday because of all this. She was planning a huge sleepover and then we, we got all these gifts for her friends and um, that, as soon as the, the lockdown happened, we had to cancel the, her sleepover. Um, you know, she's missing her teacher, all her friends at school, but it's, it's teaching her um, a lot about personal responsibility. And she's a, a lot more responsible with getting her work done. She knows that mommy and daddy have to go train. So in the morning when we wake up, you know, she gets her schoolwork together on her own. She, she pulls up uh, the Skype interviews on her own to, to Skype with her teacher. And um, we, we check her work just like her teacher would check her work. And so I think it's, it, it's definitely going to be beneficial for her in the future to be more um, responsible for herself. Wow. Well, she is a lot more responsible than my boys. I got to tell you, they don't do anything without me pulling it up. I guess she's been watching you do Skype interviews and whatnot for a long time. So perhaps she's used to it. She made a few cameos back in the day on, on my <laughs> show. So maybe this has uh, been preparing her for that. Um, at any point, I know you were supposed to fight April 11th and it's been a bit of a roller coaster. When's the fight going to happen? All that. At any point, did you say this doesn't feel right? I don't feel comfortable in the midst of the pandemic training, fighting. At any point, did you consider not fighting on this date? You know, I think that um, all of this is so new to the entire world. And when situations like this happen, especially um, with something that we have no idea how it's going and that the 
the, the landscape of it changes every day. I don't think it's a decision that you can make. It's a, it's kind of like a decision you have to make day by day, you know, and um, talking to Dana um, and him having talked to, to all of us personally and, and reassuring us that, you know, it's going to be the, the safe, he's going to do it the safest way possible. Um, it really gives me um, reassurance that we're going to be safe. And um, I guess the truth is, I feel like if there is a group of people to go out on a limb and continue to, to push through an epidemic like this, it is young, healthy fighters. You know, we, we as fighters, you know, we put our bodies through so much and we're, we're used to um, combating, you know, illnesses and, and, and kind of swimming against the stream to come out, to come out stronger. So, so I figure like, let us go out there and, and kind of be a symbol of hope. So he personally called you, Dana White personally called you to answer questions and to reassure you? Yeah, you know, I, he's, I think he's made his line available for all of us personally, you know, to, to, to reassure us that this wouldn't happen if it couldn't, he couldn't be done safely. Right. Um, have you seen, I know you're not in Jacksonville yet, but have you seen any of the videos? Tony Ferguson posted something yesterday of him getting the COVID-19 test, the swab up the nose. Have you had one yet? And, and if not, are you dreading this process? Because it looks horrible. <laughs> You know, actually, I'm actually pretty excited that we that we have the ability to get this test done, you know, just kind of for a peace of mind. Um, Josh has been trying to show me because he's freaking out about it. Uh, <laughs> but I just tell him, don't show me like I don't want to know. I just I'm probably just going to close my eyes and say, go do it, you know, and I think that's the way I'm going to go about it. I don't want to know. I don't want to see. I don't want to know how long the, the thing is. Josh was trying to show me yesterday. Um, but yeah, I. <laughs> The, the the best is when the uh, the nurse is saying it's just going to tickle your brain for a little bit, you know, it's just going to go up there and tickle your brain. Like what? That sounds like the worst experience of all time. Do you have someone at the door? Do you have to go answer your door? No, my daughter just started her Zoom meeting with her. Ah, okay. Yes. See, we're all doing it. Um, okay. So so you'll you'll be traveling later on today, and and then you get there and you have to go through the whole process, and it's going to obviously be a unique one because usually you you arrive on Tuesday, not Wednesday, right? Does this affect the weight cut process at all for you? Usually we arrive we 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 arrive Monday. We try oh. to arrive as early as we can so that we can um, settle in, you know, work out there and, and adjust to all of that. So yeah, that's different for sure. But again, like I said, I think you know the majority of of uh, of any any fighter will tell you that that a fight is, you know, 80% mental. And this is just another one of those mental climbs that you have to be able to overcome. I would imagine, and I've heard this from some other fighters, the fact that there's no live sports and there's all this attention on this card, this is what fighters dream of, right? That the world is watching you, all eyes on you. You're going to be fighting on ESPN. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, being on the prelims, way more people are going to be seeing that than the pay-per-view. That's just usually how it goes. So I would imagine that kind of gets you up a little more, right? Yeah, you're just talking about it, get, get, giving a little butterfly that crack my neck. Yeah, um, it, it's exciting. You know, um, I feel like we're in a moment in time that is going to go down in history, and I, and I'm just really, again, blessed to be a part of it. Last time we saw you, of course, was October. You were on that winning streak, disappointing loss. You were emotional afterwards. Um, and one of the things you said was uh, you were a little impatient. You had 25 minutes and maybe you, you were trying to do too much too soon. What's the biggest lesson that you learned from that fight against Joanna back in October? You know, I think the biggest lesson looking back on it now and getting through a full, a, a full camp, a new camp would be that I have to trust myself. I have to trust my skills and I trust my abilities and go out there and just settle into to who I am as a fighter. There, I don't need to force anything. I don't need to um, prove to anybody, you know, that I belong or that I am good enough. I, um, I need to trust my skills and abilities to know that this is where I belong and um, let, my, let my skills um, do the talking, go out there and just breathe and be in the moment. And, and, and every single time I do that, I, you know, I come out the other end proud. A lot of uh, talk going to that fight was surrounding the fact that the winner might get a title shot. Did you put maybe too much pressure on yourself going into it in hindsight? I think, um, you know, I think every fight 
plays out, you know, in ways that you don't expect. And yeah, I, I do think that there was, I, I wouldn't say that, I, I think the pressure, what ended up happening is I was, I, I, I was planning ahead, you know? And by planning ahead, you're, you take yourself out of the zone um, and, and you're not able to, to be in the moment. And I think that's probably what I did, you know? I was super prepared, I was super ready uh, to, to fight for the belt. And I knew that I belonged. I knew I could beat Joanna. And it just, um, it just, it, it didn't happen that night. You're not the first fighter to say that. And I'm wondering if afterward you spoke to some of your teammates, Holly, John, of course, they fought in Juan belts about how you don't plan ahead, how you just take it one fight at a time and you don't look at the next fight before winning that number one contender fight. Did you ever have conversations with them perhaps afterwards about, you know, because let's be honest, you win this fight against Carlos Barza, you're, almost right back in that same spot, uh, maybe one more fight away. How do you avoid this? Did you talk to them? Did they give you any sort of advice about not doing what you just said you did? No, I think that um, when when you come home after a loss, I don't think the, the, the thing that teammates do is try to give you advice. Hmm. You know, the thing that teammates do is, is be there for you because they know how it feels to lose. You know, like you, you put everything into that one moment. And so they, under, they understand that, that aspect of it. But really, when I talk to my teammates and my coaches, um, they say all the elements were there, you know, just, you know, certain things fell through and, you know, we were a little too early or a little too late in certain positions in the, in the, in the fight. Um, and basically what they say is that time has come and gone and you have to you have to move forward. You can't hold on to it. How long did you harp on that one? Because you were so close to the the title fight, how did that one impact you? I you know I was sad about it for a little bit, um, and I was Josh actually um, made me watch the fight back, and I think by by watching the fight back, there was a lot of good that I did in that fight, and and. Um, I think I, you, you know, you, you can be your worst critic in, in cases like that when you're so close. But after watching the fight, I really came back out of it with a lot of confidence, knowing that I, that I do belong, you know, in the top, uh, in the top of, of the division and that I, and I am that close to, to fighting for the title. Um, and so I harped on it a little bit, but I think after, after watching the fight back, it, it actually, um, it actually gave me confidence moving forward. Did you watch it just once or have you watched it again recently? We've watched it a couple times. Okay. And any, like, is it a different perspective watching it now as opposed to fresh after the fight or same type of takeaways? Yeah, I think after the fight, it's like, ah, I, I could have done this. I could have done that, you know? Um, and then, you know, even further away from the fight, you kind of just, you're able to really take a step back and really just analyze it as a fighter. Um, you know, so many things happen inside the cage that are, that are so, so fast that it's just um, one of those things. Coach Wink used to always say, you, you, you can always shoulda, woulda, coulda the situation. And, and, you know, when you lose, when you win, you're excited. There's a lot of things in a fight that, that you did wrong, but you don't pay attention to. And when, when, you, when you lose, you always harp on the things that you do wrong, but you don't see the things that you did amazing at, you know, that you, you with a win or a loss, in my opinion, um, at this stage in my career, a win or a loss doesn't matter because I have grown as a fighter um, and it's still stepping into the octagon is still one step closer to, to my ultimate goal. And that's how I take, take the fight. And that is of course, to be a, a champion and the first mom champion in uh, UFC history. I'm sure you watched the title fight between Zhang and Joanna. I'm just curious. It was an incredible fight. Who do you think won? Because there is some debate about that still. Did you think Zhang did enough to win that fight? You know, everybody asks me, and I do think that Joanna actually um, 
skimmed the. I I thought Ioana won by by not by landslide, but I like by enough to win. But I understand why Whaley would have won because of the damage that Ioana took. Um, just looked so bad, and I also I feel like the damage that Ioana took is is basically an accumulation of all of her fights since you know since she's begun she's 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 known to, to get those hematomas and you know it's just over time you know your body will react to it in that way and and uh unfortunately it did it, it all added up in that that last round and it looked really bad but like i tell everybody else i don't think anybody leaves that fight a loser it's mm. it, in, in my opinion both ladies are champions and i i tuned in as um as a student trying to scout these ladies um and i left the fight as a huge fan and admirer of both ladies they 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 brought it the entire 25 round the entire 25 minutes and anytime one lady would ramp it up the other girl would ramp it up and it was just it it led it it led my heart to be really full and proud to be a straw weight in the ufc I'm sure afterwards you were like, oh man, I want some of that, right? Like I want to be a part of something like that too. Oh yeah, it was amazing. And it's just, yeah, like you said, extra boost of motivation for sure. Um, mainstay at your fight, mainstays, I should say, your mom and your daughter, I understand they will not be at this fight, right? Yeah, they're staying home. First time they missed one of your fights? Yeah. So your mom has been to every one of your professional fights? Uh-huh. Really? She's been to the majority of them. Okay. And your daughter as well, since she's been born. My daughter has been to every single one of my fights. Wow. So what's that like for you? Knowing they won't be there? Um, they're always with me. Mm. You know, they're always with me in my heart. And um, they know, uh, like I said, like, you know, <laughs> we're, uh, training camp has been here at home. So yeah. Ray has been watching. My mom's been in, watching, you know, and... Um, that's where all the work has been putting in. So, you know, I leave with that confidence and I, you know, I'm going to go uh, take care of business and come home and, and spend time with the family. By the way, this might be a dumb question, but who's going to do your hair on fight night? I have no idea. I didn't even oh. think that, honestly. So it's actually a good question. It is a good question. And I'm sure they'll have somebody for us um, to do Josh it. Josh can't do it? <laughs> can't braid it for you? Usually it's my sister that does it. And she right. was planning on actually coming out. Um yeah, Josh said you'll know if he did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, it's not a big deal. I'll pull it back if I need to. Okay, fair enough. Um, Carla is a grinder, right? She's looked good as of late. She's won two in a row, but she hasn't finished an opponent since her debut against Rosna Yunus. Mentally, are you sort of preparing for fifteen minutes here? Absolutely. You know, you always pair her a hard 15, especially against a grinder like Carla Sparza, whose bread and butter is to, to grind it out, you know. Um, but I, 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 I think I, I fare well against grinders. And um, I, I look at her, you know, all the things that she's good at. And I think that um, I excel at all the things that she's good at as well. So, I, I, you know, people are like, are you worried if she takes you down this and that? And I, and I have to remind people that I'm I'm pretty good on my back. I've, I've, the majority of my wins in my fight career are from submissions off my back. So people just don't see that because I don't end up on my back. Cause in, in, in my fights, I'm usually the one to end up taking people down and ending, ending up on top. Um, so uh, regardless of where the fight goes, I'm excited. You know, it gets my heart racing. I'm excited to keep it standing. I'm excited to show people my boxing, you know, being here at home for the, this lo long extended camp, Josh is, you know, Josh, Josh fought for the Air Force. Josh uh, is an amazing boxing coach. We've been working on our boxing um, pretty diligently. And through working my boxing, it's actually helped me with my power in my, in my kicks. It's helped me with my power in my stance. And I'm really excited to go out there and show all of that. Um, my footwork has been, has improved. My wrestling has improved. Coach Izzy came down um, from Chicago to work with me um, exclusively uh, for this fight camp. So we have all our bases covered. And for those that may not know, I don't know if we mentioned at the top, Josh is your husband. You, you've talked yeah. about him a lot, but I just want to mention that for someone who may be watching uh, an interview with you.
obviously a very important part of your life and your training camps as well. Um, just curious, you and Carla, obviously you've been around the same orbit for a while, Invicta, um, same weight class, UFC, it's a small community. Did you have any run-ins with her in the past? Like, what's her relationship like with her? You know, um, we're cordial. She's she's a really nice girl, you know, uh, and um, I respect her for all that she's done in the sport. Like you said, we've both been in for quite a quite a time, some time now, and um, we've been wanting this matchup for some time. But you know, if I was matched up, she wasn't, and if she was matched up, I was, and um, it just we just were never able to cross paths, and so you know, what better time to do it than now? Yeah. And um, finally, obviously, there will be no fans there. It'll be empty arena. And I've said this to many people who've asked me about this. Um, obviously, I'm not the one fighting in front of no fans, but MMA fighters are sort of used to this thing with the ultimate fighter and, you know, intimate crowds and whatnot. You start your career in front of a couple hundred people. If that for you now, since you have been fighting in front of big crowds for a while, are you the kind of person who feeds off of that? Are you worried about how it might feel in there? maybe in the early portion of the fight because it will be so quiet? You know, I am actually not worried at all. Uh, I feel like regardless of if there are a million people watching or if it's in the back alley, you know, somewhere, um, once the d cage closes, it's just you and your opponent. And that, that will never change. It's going to be fun. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, like will I said, you be I know out there? Uh, unfortunately, I will not be there. I will be here in my home watching and talking a lot about it, but uh, not a lot of media going to this one. Hopefully, as time passes, that will change, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great card, and uh, the prelims especially, which begin at 6 on ESPN, um, like I said, I mean, those could be a main card for any big show, so uh, I'm looking forward to it very much, and I wish you the best. And by the way, uh, the, the hat and the sweatshirt, phenomenal. Where can we get this? Thank you. If you go to my um, Instagram, Karate Hadi MMA, we'll have a link um, available uh, shortly. I love the logo. Is that that's from like the famous Invicta photo? Is that an Esther Lynn photo? Or is Actually, that just this, this photo was taken by um, my friends over at On It, and then they allowed us to to digitalize it and 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 make it kind of this cool. It's tremendous. Shadow. Yeah, it's, it's better exciting. than the MJ logo, the Jumpman. Yeah, yeah. See, we're, we're getting it done. Tremendous. Well done. We're well getting done. it done. I love it. Uh, safe travels to Jacksonville. Thank you so much for doing this. And of course, good luck on Saturday night. All right, Ariel. It's good to see you.